All right, my name is Matt Russell, as he said, co-founder and partner at AutoStructure. Um, just to preface this, this is going to be a non-technical discussion. So um, we're going to focus here on basically the interaction with executives and basically taking some of the technical work you're doing, the cool things you see with Docker or other projects, and trying to relate that in terms that executives or your leadership team would appreciate and hopefully support you with so you can get the financial and um, authority to move forward with some of these different projects in what I call the DevOps space. So we'll blow past the agenda. So who am I? Uh, Co-founder and principal at AutoStructure. I'm a uh, project management professional, uh, great acronym, and Scrum Master. Um, I've led and initiated projects in the DevOps space in the federal sector, which is uh, kind of scary, for the last four plus years. Um, degree from U of M Flint, uh, yep, that Flint, and I'm very curious about a lot of different technology, but again, I'm, I'm not an engineer. Um, I tend to lead the teams. So, day job, I work for this guy, um, managing DevOps projects. And so, really, what does that mean? We get to play with some cool tools, and if you think that's the focus, then you're sorely in the wrong place. So it's really about getting the team to work together. We're trying to drive different operational changes in the way that they build, deploy, and, and manage their applications. So more and more, and we've been at this now for several years in the federal uh, sector, it's about trying to drive that cultural change. And a disproportionate amount of our day is really focused on this and working with the team, retooling them, getting them to look at things differently and a little bit more out of the box. So, Again, it's the federal sector. So as you can imagine, things don't move very quickly. Uh, but they have been a great team, and they've been really trying to challenge a lot of the things that they've done and have been entrenched for really, in some cases, you know, many, many years. So exactly, is it a real thing? In my opinion, absolutely yes. So the thing I like to say is when you're working with peers on a team, a lot of you can speak the same language. Even if you're talking you know, Linux versus Windows or something, there's a, a common framework, a common understanding that the team can come to. But when you're talking about something with an executive or if they're watching a demo, it, you know, I jokingly say it's like them watching the Matrix. They have no idea what you're talking about. And some of you, it may be like if you have to do tech support for your parents, same kind of thing. So it comes down to language barriers, communication barriers, other things. What happens? They end up confused or like, what is this guy talking about? I, this doesn't matter. I've got something that's going down or I've got a team that's trying to deploy something next week. This makes no sense. So what do executives care about? Again, this is what we found. So happy customers, happy business. Again, I'll, I'll touch on something that's a little different in the federal sector, but ultimately, if you've got a happy customer, your company's making money, you guys are gonna stay in business, have jobs and be able to do uh, more cool things. They want a balanced budget. They've obviously got to keep things profitable. They only get so much money every year. And, you know, they jokingly, they like big spreadsheets. They want to see that everything's making sense. Security, that's been a theme already. We've seen this morning in the keynote and other places. Obviously, we've got to make sure things are secure. And here, nice data center, right? They want to make sure that this doesn't happen. So they don't want calls at 3 in the morning saying that something went down, that your team blew something up, and now they've got to go in and deal with it instead of spending time with their family. No different than you guys don't want to do that. So one thing I also want to touch on that's a little different in the government side that we found versus the commercial side is that they're focused on the agency mission and the security, right? They, they don't necessarily care about the profits. They're not in a for-profit business. Um, they really, they, we call it the Washington Post test. Nobody wants to get on the front page of the Washington Post. So anything we do has to make sure you keep them safe. And they don't want to be called in front of Congress for something that blew up within that agency. So that adds a little bit of different dynamic with how you discuss things, present things, and pitch things to them, especially the first topic. So again, speak in their terms. So what's their background? What do they relate to? Think about this. And every client, every executive can be a little bit different, right? So how does it enable the business? Most important question. They want to know that. They're getting pressure budget and other things to defend the programs that you guys are working on. What's the return on investment, ROI? And a term we use often is the payback period. Budgets in the federal sector are allocated yearly. You may not be able to talk about a three-year ROI. They may need to see that result that year. Um, how do they reprioritize existing projects? Again, federal sector and major enterprises, they're planning in out years. So what are you going to do to switch something that's already been locked in? Why should they do that? 
technical, non-technical, military. If any of you have military background, especially in the IT space, that's a whole other layer of acronyms and lingo and terms that I don't even begin to understand. We support the civilian side. And again, security. So in our case, um, we do work in the US Department of Agriculture. So what was our problem? Here are several things that we saw going on that we were loosely involved with trying to fix. So patching, security, network issues. They basically have a, a, a network infrastructure that's in need of a lot of upgrades. Um, team, as always, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, overworked team. In, in our space, what's this magical cloud that we keep hearing about, right? There's a lot of uh, restrictions on the ability to use commercial cloud in the federal sector. Underutilized VMs and very laborious release processes. Also, since um, I've been there, every year they've had a declining budget. Contrary to what you may think, there was big funding going in during the Recovery Act and the recession. Since then, the government spending in our area has gone down. So we looked at that and said, okay, the things in red were some things that we thought we could help with with a Docker pilot. So came up with our plan of attack. So we looked at getting some data for different things. VM utilization rates, the cost per VM, cost per Docker license, release effort, release duration. Basic 101 level things, but that we knew were pain points they've got. Here's some, and I've scrubbed this a little bit, but here's some loose numbers on the right. And I wanna highlight two weeks to just get a basic VM and two to three weeks typically to process a release once it's checked in. So then what do we do? Well, let's crunch some numbers, see what we come up with. So real quick, we started with basically just a 5X consolidation, very conservative. Um, one VM, about 900 bucks a year, reduction of four VMs, 3,600, Run the math, government gets a better rate than the list, but for purposes here, about $1,900 in savings for every host that we run. A couple other things that we didn't really spend a lot of time on quantifying from a cost standpoint is, you know, pack more containers onto VMs, less effort, less duration, and less maintenance as well. So there's some straight labor cost reduction that we get there and opportunity for business improvement. So some intangibles. Funny thing was we presented all that to the executive and we had a really compelling financial business case. He said, you know what, that's great, but the most important thing to me is the portability. It was cool to see them touch on that in the keynote today. So they're trying to move things from government data centers, FedRAMP data centers, government run, out to, for example, Azure and Amazon. And what they've done is they put the application teams through really a lot of pain trying to do those migrations in the past between data centers and now out to the commercial side. They didn't want to do that again. They wanted to make it easier for the operations team and the application teams to do that migration. And by using those, obviously there's some cost savings. So what do we use to promote it? We came up with that brief business case. There's some trust in our prior work. Like I said, we've been doing this for about four years now in the federal sector. And we did the quick and dirty analysis and promoted the heck out of it. So they agreed to a pilot. We went to town, started building it, putting it together. Again, make sure you involve the existing team. They want to see that. They want to make sure that you guys aren't building a silo, that you're out there reaching out to the team, trying to understand it, and put it into the terms that they understand. And some days, given that last item especially, you feel like you're putting your head through the wall, that we were building a mission to Mars. Really, at some point, you get through that, you've got it running, and you're ready to do some demonstrations. So DC was very excited when we went to do our demo. Um, and seriously, our office is just past the uh, Smithsonian Castle there, if you've ever been there. Um, so we went through a series of demos. Uh, the internal team, obviously getting them to sign off on it. The sponsors, basically the team, the data center manager, app development leads and others, went all the way up to the CIO and the deputy CIO. And then most importantly, we went out to the application teams. We showed them what we were doing. We showed them how they could package things up into containers and move forward. Basically what we did, and the demo that we did for the CIO was, and these are the quick steps, so pack it up in a container, install it, patch Tomcat, we updated the application, we rolled it back, pretending that we had broke it, review the monitoring all the way through it, and then we packed a bunch of containers on that single instance. So, typically each of those could have taken several weeks in the past. When we were doing the demo, we did it basically in under 15 minutes. So straight right away there, the executives could see a major process reduction. We did it while complying with security and the things that they had laid out there. If you haven't seen it, a good document that's in draft right now is a document from NIST. Um, they, they publish 
all kinds of guidelines for security controls in the federal sector. NIST has a draft document out about containers. So lessons learned, create the business case, put the elevator pitch together, make sure you involve the existing team, do the prototype, the demo, discuss really how did we enable the business? What did we do that made it better for them, the end customer of the CIO in this agency? And then ask for the resource support. And really for us, other than the pilot within a team, a small team we had, that was the most important thing and we had it at the end. That's how we started to grow. So some examples of Execlish, I put these up here again, these are somewhat generic but go from code check into production in minutes, higher level of quality and security. Reduce dependencies on the hosting provider, that's the portability we talked about. And unfortunately cut down there, but increase utilization of the VMs, bringing down the cost duration and effort while still having increased quality. So essentially what we found is that results validate the business case, that continues to build trust with that team. They believe in us, they continue to put the money into us, and support what we're trying to do with their team, ultimately that gives you more funding. Do this over and over. We started with other tools, we've moved into Docker at this point, we're already looking past that into other things that we wanna bring in. Automating their testing cycles with the development teams is a huge piece right now that we're layering in. So what do we need? Don't forget the management support, funding and authority, that's really been the focus today. They'll give you the budget, and always, and I've tried to stress this the whole way through, get the rank and file support of the team to say that they are willing to go along with this, they see what you're doing, they see the value in it. Make your case with relevant data. Change is hard, please don't forget that, especially when you're working with a team and trying to drive that change. Don't give up, speak in their terms, ultimately deliver the results, sell the business value, not the software. This is, in my opinion, the single most important thing that you could take away from this. The executives wanna hear what the business value is, not that Docker or Chef or Puppet or one of these other things is a cool tool. They wanna to see this. And you have to make them understand what you're doing and how it ties directly back to that mission. So that's the end of our story for today. There's more to it. If you'd like, um, feel free to ask questions or uh, stop by and see us. Thank you.